these are some of my favorite patterns and whereas they might fall into one of those prior categories, I'm just going to sit here and do some of these that I think are just what I call meat and potatoes flies. The first one I want to start with is one that I call a UFO. And I think the name is, is suitable. Unidentified flying object. Doesn't look like any insect in particular, but to the trout it just seems to look like food. And it really is a meat and potatoes fly. This is one that I've fished everywhere I've gone in the United States, and it has really, really had spectacular results. Two stories come immediately to mind with this particular fly. First time it was ever cast, it was not cast by me. It was cast by a friend of mine who had been working a little brown trout on the Virginia Smith River for about 45 minutes. He put this fly on, the first cast, the fish came over and took it. Second time was on a river in Colorado. I was fishing with a fellow who was working with the Scott Rod Company at the time. Eric and I had pulled up to the river and stepped out, decided to go fishing. We were standing there to run and Eric says, well, I don't know what to try. And I handed him one of these and I said, do me a favor, put this thing on. He looked at it, kind of scratched his head and said, well, okay. Tied it on, made one cast with it. Brown of probably over 20 inches came up whacked this thing, and of course Eric missed the fish. He wasn't ready for it. Well, since then we've had similar experiences everywhere, on the Madison River, on the Spring Creeks around Livingston, rivers in Virginia, rivers in Tennessee, rivers in Colorado. This is just one of my all-time favorite patterns, the UFO. This fly is tied on a rather interesting hook. It's a Teamco hook. It was not really designed as a dry fly hook, but on some of my larger dry flies, I really like this hook. It's a swimming nymph hook. The number is 400T. This is a size 8 swimming nymph hook. I like this for a number of reasons. Whereas it is called a nymph hook, if you look at it carefully, it's a very fine wire hook. It lends itself very nicely to big dry flies. Another thing I like about it is the fact that it has this upward bend in it, which makes it very easy to determine where you want to stop your body and where you want to do the head. You can use this bend as a marker in tying these patterns. As usual, the first thing we're going to do is attach the thread to the shank of the hook and wind it backwards. One of the things about some of these flies is the, the size on this, the size 8, you might want to go to a long nose bobbin, something a little bit longer than this. You might find it somewhat easier to tie these patterns with in this size. I'm going to bring the thread all the way back well into the bend of the hook. Don't be afraid to bring it back here. Past the point of the barb of the hook is a good place to stop the thread, somewhere in here. So I've brought the thread all the way from this bend back to where the hook bend starts down at the rear. Then I'm going to wrap the thread forward. I'm going to tie the foam in starting at this point right here. I'm going to tie a foam body in. The foam I use is the usual closed cell foam. This is in a 1 8 inch thickness. Buy it in sheets at your local fly shop. I'm going to cut a fairly good sized piece. This is a good quarter inch in width. Just take a straight edge, lay it down on the foam, slide your razor blade along the straight edge, cut out a piece of body foam. It's fairly wide. Now there's a reason I'm going to tie it in where I do. If I tie it in back here, I'm going to get a big bulge at the back. If I tie it in up here, I'm going to have a nice even underbody. And I do this on a lot of my flies. I simply tie the foam in all the way to the rear where I'm going to end the body. That way, when I tie the underbody material on, I'm going to get a nice even layer of this underbody material instead of a big lump back here and then a thinner portion toward the front. The underbody on this fly is four or five strands of peacock curl. Don't scrimp on the peacock curl. It's beautiful material. I use a tremendous amount of it. Take your peacock curl, cut four or five strands out, even the tips up, and then tie the tips, not the butt, into the point at the rear of the fly. Wrap your thread forward. 
to where the body material ends, and then wrap your peacock curl. You're going to use a lot of material on these bigger flies, but don't worry about it. If you tie your own flies, it's still a lot cheaper than going out and buying them. You got a nice underbody on this, beautiful peacock curl, iridescent material. I just think peacock curl has got some qualities that you can't beat. You can't find it in any other material. Tie the peacock curl down, trim away the excess. Now usually when I tie with peacock curl, I will reinforce it by simply wrapping the thread back through it and then forward again. That way when a fish's teeth hit it, it's not going to cut the hurl. Even if it does, you've wrapped it down. It's not going anywhere. Doesn't hurt it one bit. You can see that that hurl looks just dandy. Cut away a little bit here, a little straggler piece there and there. And we've got the underbody done. Nice iridescent underbody done with peacock curl. Now to form the body, simply fold the foam over. This is standard procedure on a lot of my terrestrials. You do not want to stretch that foam and tie it down. As usual, trim the excess away. And then with some thread wraps, tie that little bit of foam down that's sticking out in front. It's amazing how this foam simply just ties down and you have no residual foam left over. It's very easy to work with once you get the hang of it. Wrap the thread well into the bend of the hook here because the next step is to tie the rubber legs on this fly. And if you have that thread wrap up there, when you tie the legs in, it's not going to have a tendency to shift on you. It's going to give a good base to tie the legs in. Now I want two legs want on either side of this fly. I use a lot of this round rubber leg material. It comes in big sheets like this. So I'm just going to count off four of these, split it with my scissors, and just pull a little group of four legs. And that's what they look like. Don't separate these at this point. Simply tie all four of these legs in at once without separating them. Kind of lay them over on the side of the hook shank, make a loose wrap to catch them, then tie them down tightly. Now one thing you'll notice is I've left some space behind these legs toward the body. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to bring the legs back and cut them off just a little bit back from the end of the fly, just about even with the bend of the hook. Then with the point of your scissors, needle or whatever, Split the legs in the middle so that now I have two on each side, but I haven't separated the legs yet. Not these two, not those two. Easiest way to do this is with a figure eight thread wrap. Take your thread, bring it behind the leg away from you, and behind the leg towards you. Grab the legs, hold them in position, make a couple of loose wraps, make sure they're positioned the way you want them, then you can tighten down. Now we've got the legs tied in. You see that? That's exactly the way we want them. Those legs tying beautifully that way and you don't have to fight with four different legs trying to tie one in separately or trying to tie them all in separately. At this point I'm just going to leave them like this. I'll split them when I get through tying the fly. It's easier if you don't have a lot of material flopping around getting in your way. Wings on this fly are tied with crystal flash. In this case, this is the peacock crystal flash, the opalescent peacock. Don't use too much of this crystal flash. I, I can't emphasize that enough. I think people get carried away with crystal flash and use way too much of it. Cut off what you need and tie this in right in front of the legs. Tie it in tightly because crystal flash has a tendency to be slick, smooth, and it'll slip. One thing I do want to point out here, I don't know whether you've noticed this or not, but there's a little camera sitting right in front of me. This little guy right here. This is called a point of view camera. And if you've been paying attention, what you see on this camera is exactly what I'm doing here at the vise. 
It's a real handy little tool. It lets you know exactly from my point of view what I'm doing. All right, I've got the wings tied in, and now I want to separate the crystal flash into two bundles. Form my wing bundles on either side of the hook shank. The way to keep these separated, use your scissors, kind of separate these into two equal portions. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this crystal flash as I did with the rubber legs. That is, I'm going to bring the thread behind this wing over here, behind this wing over here, hold them in position, and then I can wrap them down. It's a very easy way to separate your wings. You run your thread up, make sure that crystal flash is tied down nice and tightly. There you can see the wings separated. Got two nice wings, one on either side of that fly. The underbody wrap or the wrap on the head region is just more peacock curl. Again, four or five fibers. Cut them off, trim the tips. And notice that when I tie this peacock curl in, I tie it in by the tip, not by the butt. That way when I wrap it, it's going to fuzz up nicely, give you exactly what you're looking for. Okay, we've got the peak eye curl tied in. Just wrap it up to the eye of the hook. Once you're right up at the eye of the hook, bring the thread over and tie it off. Now remember what we did on the body. We wrapped the thread back and forth through the peacock curl, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Just going to bring my thread back through that peacock curl, just reinforces it, and then back up about two-thirds of the way to the eye of the hook. At this point, I'm going to tie in the head. The head on this fly is made from a round foam disc. This is the size I'll use on this, and of course the size is going to vary depending upon the size of the hook that you use. The way you cut these is to either spend a little money with a biological supply house and get a set of what's known as cork boring tools. They come in different diameters all the way from half inch down to a quarter inch. Or you can go to your local hobby shop and get brass tubing of the same diameter cut little four or five inch sections of it and sharpen it. The way to sharpen your brass tubing or these is to use this little instrument right here which you can get from a reloading supply shop. It's called a case deburring tool. What we do with this is to simply take the cork borer or your piece of brass tubing, turn the inside with a conical region of this tool and then Slip the other side over the tube and give it a few turns. This is going to put a real razor edge on this. And if I just take this sheet of foam, cut a little circle out of it, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll use a little piece of this material here to keep from cutting the table. Just take your piece of brass tubing, sit it down on that foam, put a little pressure on it, and you cut a nice circle out. You can use anything to punch that circle out of the tube with, a piece of heavy wire, something like this. Just drop it down in there if that will fit, and there comes your little circle. And that's the size circle that I'll use for the head. This is about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. To attach the head, simply take that foam circle, lay it down with the front of the circle just about at the eye of the hook and then tie it in. Make sure that you've got it centered where you want it. Give it a couple of loose wraps, then tighten down. Then you can whip finish the fly. At this point, Go back and separate your rubber legs. Take the point of your scissors, just 
separate that leg, rotate your fly, or pull your crystal flash wing out of the way, and separate this leg. So now we've got our legs separated. Everything looks pretty good. And I love to put eyes on these patterns. I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that fish key in on eyes on these big terrestrials. And we'll make this pretty evil looking. I'm going to use a red eye on this. That's the first one. That's how I first tied this pattern, and it seems to work pretty well. I've never bothered to try anything else, although you may want to try yellow or green or something else. This is easy shape sparkle body material. Comes in these handy little tubes. Takes a few minutes to dry. Usually I'll tie a dozen or more of these. Let them sit overnight just to make sure everything's dry and that we don't have any problem with it. And now we've got a couple of nice red eyes on this thing. I think that those red eyes may add to the fish catching appeal of this particular fly. Uh, just one other story about this. I tied this originally as a cicada, but uh, it works fine for everything else. As I say, it's a meat and potatoes fly. It's a big fly, big fly, big fish. And we've taken an awful lot of big fish on this fly all the way through the United States, east to west. Seems to work on every water that we've tried it. Give it a shot. I think you'll enjoy fishing this pattern.